Good afternoon, media. We are joined by LSU coach Kim Mulkey and the student athletes are Flaje Johnson, Anisha Morrow, and Angel Reese. Anissa. 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 That's what we said. And Anissa. we will open it up to the student athlete questions. Third row. Scott Rabelais from the Baton Rouge Advocate. Flaje, uh, I'll ask you a question I asked Jasmine last year in Dallas. Was this the best game of your life? <laughs> Uh, no, um, I played better games. Uh, I feel like my whole my whole life. I've been hooping a whole long time. This is just a bigger stage for me, and just give all the glory to God and working. That's it. Right here. Pat Eaton, Rob, with the Associated Press. Angel, can you just talk about that closing fourteen to two run? You guys were down sixty seven, sixty four, and it seemed like you had another level there at the end. Yeah, we, um, we've known all year it's going to come down to the last place and last possessions. And Coach Bob tells us all year, like, one possession, one possession. And being able to get stops and scoring and being able to get stops and continue to score, which is really vital for us. And we also had a thing that tonight was no rebounds, no rings. And I think we, we kind of did a good job rebounding. Um, we still got out rebounded. But I think as a team and our guards did a great job tonight rebounding. Yeah, I have more rebounds than Angel. Oh, my God. One, <laughs> just one, just one. Go ahead. Um, hi, Azar from Envy Sports. This, this question is for Angel. Um, you you deed up um, Lauren Betts. Am I saying there? Yes, Lauren Betts pretty well, you, especially the second half. It didn't look good in the beginning, but clearly you, you, you adapted. Um, but it's not your, the first type of big you play, mm -hmm. obviously, with Kador. How Kador? Kadora, right. How does playing her um, help you when you play against a big like Betts? How does it help you? Yeah, um, in the beginning of the game, I was just trying to see how the officials were going to call the game. Um, I think I didn't only have one foul going into the second half. So I was just trying to fill out the officials, and I kind of had to be smarter. And I think I've matured in that way, being able to see how the game is going to be officiated. But I mean, playing against, against a great Camilla Cardoza and then being able to be teammates with Lauren this summer, I kind of know how she plays. Um, she's a great player, great post player. And I give kudos to her. She, she, she worked all night for her points. And I think I did a great job. But it was a team effort. My teammates dug in sometimes and got double teamed. So it wasn't going to all be on me tonight. And I just appreciate my team it's really helping me. Corey Diaz with the USA Today Network in Louisiana. Uh, if I may ask Angel a question and then follow up with, with Flage. Angel, how, how proud are you of your ladies? I know you and I have talked all season long about this is not the Angel Reese show. When you had to go to the bench and foul trouble, they did not allow things to, to get out of hand because you just talked about how the team was able to be a team today and win this as a team. Well, apparently um, people thought that we were just a bunch of individuals. Um, so we took that personal and we do have a star. We have stars on our team, we do. And people don't think that we're supposed to gel together. And we've gelled together all year. Some nice is me, some nice is me, some nice is Flage. It's so many different players that can score on every, any given night. And people don't realize that. Like, we have a purpose and our purpose is to get to the championship and we don't care who scores. So yeah. I, I didn't lose confidence in my team that I knew that they were gonna come out and continue to do what they do because we have great players on our team. So the best team won tonight, also the best individual team won, individuals on the team won as well. Let's, let, let's get that straight. <laughs> uh, I agree, I think, um I, when Angel fouled out, it was like, all right, Fly, like, you got to step up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got the most experience, like, you know what I'm saying, uh, with Haley and, you know, Nice ain't really played in this tournament before, so it was just like, you got to be the one to step up. You know what I'm saying? And I think that I wasn't scared of the moment. You know what I'm saying? I just, I really loved the, the, the light. I loved that underdog feeling. And, you know, Coach Moki told me, you know, go do what you do, and then I did. Nancy Amory, USA Today Sports. Angel, it looked like you might have said something to Corey Close as you came out of the game and then again in the handshake line. What, what were you guys saying to each other? Oh, no, she told me good game. It was another coach that was talking a little crazy. Right there. Deshaun from Envy Online. This question is for all three student athletes. As we cap off March, which is Women's History Month, can all three of you let us know who inspired you to be who you are today? Your um, my mother inspired me to be who I am today. Yeah, I would say my mom. Um, yeah, my mom's a single mom, and being able to, me and my brother being able to go to college for free was just always been something that's inspirational for me. Yeah, um, I had to get emotional. Don't cry. I'm not. Um, 
sorry. My mom too, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, before the game I was crying. I'm just emotional. Um, you know, I was trying to figure out like, what's my why? And I kind of just looked at my mom today, like I never looked at her before and it was like, I know my why now, you know what I'm saying? And I had just a, a different level of, a passion I knew I was gonna play with today. And I see my mom out there and I just, she just sacrificed so much for me. So it's definitely my mom. Yeah. Pat Eden Rob with the AP. Um, Flaj, can you just talk about uh, this run to try to, to try to repeat and how did, you know, being in this, being on this stage before help you guys tonight as you're coming down the stretch? I think we just take it one game at a time. Um, you know, we're, we're high right now off of this dub, but I think I, we'll give ourselves until like 4.30 and then we're locked in onto the next game. Like, you know what I'm saying? You got to have that mindset going into the tournament. You got to have a, have a short attention span. You know what I mean? That's, that's the route that I'm taking. Yeah, I had a good game today, but now I have to flush it. You know what I mean? If we really want to go far in the tournament. And I just love this team's togetherness. And we just, you know, we just have that experience. So my experience of the team, just flush it. Game was good, okay, cool, but we got we to gotta watch film and we got to dominate the next one as well. Uh, Andrea Adelson with ESPN.com. Two questions for two separate players. Angel, follow up when you said it was another coach who was talking to no. you. Can you give us no. more information next on that? Next question. Okay. Uh, Flaje, your emotions showed when you were on the court um, tonight. Um, I was just wondering, I saw you also kind of go over to their fans and kind of point after the game was over if there was something you were saying to them or something. Yeah, it, it was just, um, you know, their fans talking, you know what I'm saying. It's it just regular basketball stuff, stuff like that get heated in the moment. Chessie Boucher with NBC 33 in Baton Rouge. Angel, it's almost like the world is against y'all. Is it the motivation within because of that? Is that why y'all are out to prove a point? We're the good <laughs> villains. Uh, I was talking to Kramer about that. Like, everybody want to beat LSU. Everybody want to beat LSU. Everybody want to play against LSU. You got to realize, like, we're not – any regular basketball team. Like, we're, the coach, coach talks about it all the time. Like, they, she calls us the Beatles. Like, people are running after our bus. People are coming at games. You're seeing sellouts. You're seeing people buying jerseys. You're seeing more sellouts than the men. Like, we're impacting the game so much. And all of us are just super competitive and want to win and want to do whatever it takes to win. And we're just, we're, we're just changing the game. I, we were talking about, like, we're doing the unknown. Me being able to, like, be on the court, but also off the court. I like to model and do other things. Like I can do both. Flaje can do both. Anissa can do both. We can all do this, do both. And that's what people don't believe in. Like mm -hmm. they don't think that we're focused. And we prove every single night. When we get between those lines, we're focused. And like that's what we're worried about. So, just being able to have teammates that have my back, have teammates, have coaches that just have each other's back this whole time. Like I don't care what, what the outside think. I know what's going on in that locker room. Mm -hmm. all right. Last one, go ahead. Deshaun from NBA Online. Um, to piggyback off your question, Angel, not too long ago, we passed the 50th year of Title IX, I think in 2022, um, which was an important fight for women's equality in sports. As we look at women's basketball today, as much as it's grown, I mean, I work in New York City, I looked up, I saw a Reebok billboard after work. I listened to music and so forth. Can you guys talk about how important it is to be a part of that history and how much you guys have grown women's basketball in general. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's like we're doing it because we're so, you know, we're kind of set in the blueprint, right? And people always tell us how we should act, how we should dress, how we should talk. But there's never been, you know, people who've done this before and in the light and in the social media world right now. So, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be kids after us that follow and we try to set a good example for them. But, you know, we have a coach that yesterday, she told us like, be you. And like, she's had like a 30 minute speech, but the only thing that I really heard was like, <laughs> be you, you know what I mean? Like that's the only thing that I heard. Because it really struck me in my heart that, you know, as long as I produce on the court, she want me to be who I am. You know what I'm saying? And as individuals, I think you kind of need that confidence from your coach. Like coach said like, I don't care if you're an astronaut, as long as you land on the move and come back before 1.30 practice, do what you want to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. to have a coach support us, we're able to blaze those trails. We're able to be who we are in this world. And, you know, we only get four years to do this, so you got to maximize it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just important 
being able to take scary steps. I think I've said so many things that a lot of people are scared to say, and I'll take the hit for it, but I know I've impacted so many different people. Young black girls that look up in New York City, like you said, and see Angel Reese, like, I know I can, they, they know they can do this. They know they can be in this position one day, and it's crazy, it's full circle. It's almost a year since everything has transpired and our life has changed. Since the national championship, we ain't had peace. And it's crazy to say that, that we won at the, high, at, at the highest level in college, and we haven't had peace, but I wouldn't want to change this day. I wouldn't want to change where we are right now. I wouldn't want to change the three letters across my chest because it means something. And I want to be a part of history. I want to be a part of this culture, this sisterhood, and just keep winning and winning and winning. And we look back in 40 years, and when we're old and sitting in our rocking chair, like Coach Malky always say, and just be like, we did that. Like, we made history. Like, we were part of that, and we were trailblazers. Thank you, student athletes. Thank and you. congratulations. Thank you. And we'll now take questions for Coach. Third row first, and then over here. Kim, uh, how did uh, how did you think that the, the officiating affected the game? Because there were a lot of there were a lot of close calls being called both ways. The both both teams post players got in a lot of foul trouble. Yeah, it's basketball. I thought officiating was fine. Next one is over here on the left. Keep going. Two rows. There we go. Nancy Hammer with the uh, USA Today Sports. Uh, Kim, the Washington Post story about you published today. Have you had a chance to see it? And do you have any comment on it? No. <laughs> when did it publish? Uh, a couple hours before the game. Imagine that. I must have thought y'all would look at it, right? Get some clicks or be a distraction. No, ma'am, I haven't read it, and I probably won't read it. I probably will have my attorneys communicate with me to see if there's anything in there that we need to be concerned about. Go ahead. Pat Eaton, Rob, with the Associated Press. Kim, your players just kind of said it. They, they've kind of embraced this us against the world mentality. Is that something you've embraced as well? Do you kind of tell them, you know, to, to, to like enjoy having the black hat on and enjoy being who you are? What is your message to them in terms of that us against the world thing? How many of you in here are mothers? Raise your hand if you're a mother. How many of you in here are grandmothers? Damn, I'm the only one. I hope this kind of answers your question. These young ladies, I saw an article. I didn't see it. Someone sent it to me. It was a commentary from the LA Times. I'm not sure if that young man is in here. You can criticize coaches all you want. That's our business. You can come at us and say you're the worst coach in America. I hate you. I hate everything about you. We expect that. It comes with the territory. But the one thing I'm not going to let you do, I'm not going to let you attack young people. And there were some things in this commentary, guys, that you should be offended by as women. It was so sexist and they don't even know it. It was good versus evil in that game today. Evil? Called us dirty debutantes? Take your phone out right now and Google dirty debutantes and tell me what it says. Dirty debutantes? Are you kidding me? I'm not gonna let you talk about 18 to 21 year old kids in that tone. It was even sexist for this reporter to say UCLA was milk and cookies. Now you women sit there and you keep your mouth shut if you want. I'm in the last third of my career, but I'm not gonna let sexism continue. And if you don't think that's sexism, then you're in, in denial. How dare people attack kids like that? You don't have to like the way we play. You don't have to like the way we trash talk. You don't have to like any of that. We're good with that. 
But I can't sit up here as a mother and a grandmother and a leader of young people and allow somebody to say that. Miss Armour, I think you asked me the other day and I cut you off, didn't I? Maybe that's your story to write. Didn't you ask me something about a man and I cut you off? Think about what I'm saying, okay? Because guys, that's wrong. I don't even know what dirty debutantes are, but I know when I Googled it, I went, <gasps> growing the game was a part of it. How many of you have been to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, raise your hand and seen our games? How many of you have been to an SEC game when we played on the road? You want to talk about growing the game? Go see our crowds, people. I don't get that. I'm sorry. I come from a different generation. I get it. But I know sexism when I see it and I read it. That was awful. So I hope I've answered your question. Um, we just play hard. We play competitive. It doesn't matter if it's my son out there. It doesn't matter if, if it was anybody's brothers out there. We're out there to kick your rear end, and that's how they play. It's how I was taught by the greatest in this business. Look at the people I played for. They're, they're Hall of Famers, legendary coaches. They probably couldn't coach in this generation. But that's who I learned from. I'm done. We've time for a couple more. Right here, yes. Dan Zakczewski, Outkick.com. Coach, do you have any plans tomorrow, either personally or with the team, to celebrate the Easter holiday? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, every Sunday, if it wasn't Easter, we have devotion. We have devotion as a team. And every morning and every noon and every dinner meal, each kid is asked to pray. And we don't have a room full of Baptists, Methodists, Cat we have Muslims, we have Jewish kids, we have all walks of life. And we respect whatever prayer they want to say. So to answer your question, you better believe that we will do that. Thank you for asking that. Here and then last one in the back. Go ahead, Coach. Um, Azar Johnson, MV Sports. You've always said, um, and from day one, you, you said when, when UConn was running the show, you had made it clear, and, and now you saw what, what's happening now. I mean, this tournament, everybody thinks, this, the team out there playing that, everybody thinks they could win it. Of course, you guys with being the champs. Um, there's a variety of teams that you think. What are you telling your team, or what are you saying to your team to make sure, you know, like the other teams, like this isn't always guaranteed? What, what, are, you, what are you telling them that, that's helping them keep this run going? I'm just me. I'm real. They feel me. I say things in that locker room that if you were just on the outside and you heard, you would go, oh! But they love it. They feel my energy. They feel my, my warmth. They feel my realness. And I'll do the same thing in preparation for this next game. Because see, all I want those young ladies to do, all of them, I want them to graduate, and I want them to go in this real world and kick ass. And if I can prepare them for that, through the good, the bad, the ugly, the ups, the downs, you learn everything about the world through sports. That's all I, that's all I care. That's all I care about. Last one in the back. Go ahead. Uh, Andrea Adelson with ESPN. Kim, regarding the, the game, what did you see from your team as UCLA was making its run and obviously came back from the deficit first off? And then why do you feel like they responded particularly, Flage, the way that they did to get you guys a win? I thought we extended the lead a couple times. We just couldn't get over that hump. We, we should have gone in at halftime with a 10-point lead and we gave up a three. And um, then we took another lead. I'm not sure if it went up to eight or nine or whatever it was. And then they would chip away at it. So you're continually telling them the little things you have to do 
to win this ball game. Uh, I thought that um, I thought Aaliyah Del Rosario was big for us tonight. She has the size and the height to compete in there with Betts, especially when Angel got in foul trouble. I thought that um, Morrow took over a little bit offensively uh, when we got really, really tired. We got tired. And um, I just thought a lot of individual players did a lot of little things to help us just keep playing the game. One of the ways I've always thought that we can win a lot of games is we get to the foul line. And we did that again tonight. I can't remember, did we shoot 20 something, 30? I don't know what it was, but get to the foul line, attack. You can't be afraid of height. They're gonna, she's gonna block your shots. Just take it in there and keep going at them. Run the floor. We didn't get enough run outs and enough transition buckets but we got just enough at the right time. Thank you, Coach. Uh-huh. Congrats again. Uh -huh. Thank you.